want you to take a minute and remember what it was like when you woke up this morning. You throw the covers off and swing your legs over the side of the bed, stand up and stretch. Then you head down the hall, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, get ready for work, pull on your pants, button up your shirt, grab a cup of coffee and head out the door to hop in your car. Then the next day, that's all different. You can't throw the covers off or swing your legs over the side of the bed. You have to have help. You can't go to the bathroom or brush your teeth. You have to have help. Getting dressed, drinking coffee, driving to work, all require help. That's exactly what happened to Milton. He was a typical middle-class Brazilian citizen, good paying job in construction, nice home, good income. And one day, that all changed. He was on the job, uh, using a metal tape measure over the side of a balcony to measure something, and he fell into a power line. He was electrocuted, and due to the severe burns, he had to have all of his limbs amputated just to save his life. His life quickly changed. He can no longer work, so he doesn't have an income. His wife can no longer work because she has to take care of him, so now they live in the slums, and the Brazilian systems do little or nothing to help them. People with disabilities are the world's largest minority, and one in which any one of us could become a part of at any second. 15% of the world's population, or one billion people, are living with a disability. One third of those require some sort of technology to get by on a day-to-day -day basis. Unfortunately, having a disability is both a cause and a consequence of poverty. If you have a disability, you're more likely to live in poverty, and if you live in poverty, you're more likely to have a disability. So you might ask, how can I help? Some may give money to charities or nonprofit organizations, or maybe join organizations like Doctors Without Borders or the Peace Corps. I think we all have our own superpowers that we can use to try and help and change the world. I was at this award ceremony a couple weeks ago for these amazing high school students who are graduating and want to go on and major in engineering and technology. All of their aspirations were to change the world and make the world a better place or develop technology to improve our lives. I think that's so amazing. I was and still am one of those people. But as the years have gone by, I've come to realize doing that is a little different than I thought it would be. I'd like to propose that we change the question. Look at the problem in a slightly different way. Instead, let's ask, how can I empower? How can I give people the tools to help themselves? Engineers and designers have this really cool superpower in problem solving and creativity. And I think we're uniquely equipped to empower people with disabilities living in poverty. But it's not about making the next bigger, better, fancier technology. By developing simple, affordable, sustainable, and adaptable assistive technologies for people living with disabilities, we can empower them to improve their daily lives, to earn an income, to improve their health, their self-worth, and to contribute to society. Simple, affordable, sustainable, adaptable. These are the key words. Let's go back to Milton. I met Milton on my first study abroad trip to Brazil where I take students. As we sat there in his two room home, two rooms, not two bedroom, crumbling walls, listening to his story, eating cake and pop that his wife bought for us to thank us for coming with likely their entire month's income, I looked around and there was not a dry eye in the room. Not because we pitied Milton, but because we envied him. Because he is the happiest person I've ever met in my entire life. He is just happy to be alive. Happy to see his grandchildren grow up. But he wants something more. He wants more independence. He wants to relieve the burden of his care on his wife. When we left there, we knew we had to do something to help Milton. So our students set off 
doing a fundraiser to purchase him a pair of mechanical body-powered upper limb prosthetics. A couple years later, we took them down and fitted him. Unfortunately, he never uses them. The main reason is that they are ill-fitting. Prosthetics like this need to be adjusted about every six months, even here in the US. Our bodies change all the time. And it, when it's hot, we swell. When we gain and we lose weight, and so it needs to be adjusted all the time. The nearest prosthetist to Milton is a five and a half hour car drive away. Obviously he can't drive, he doesn't own his own vehicle, and the last time he talked someone to taking him, they were robbed at gunpoint while sitting in traffic. Another reason Milton doesn't use them is they're really heavy and really hard to use. And then to top it all off, they're really hot and sweaty. Uh, if you've ever been to Brazil, it's a tropical region, especially where he is, so it's hot and humid all the time. So I want you to picture what it's like in the middle of summer here in Iowa, and you're wearing really tight-fitting rubber rain boots, 100 degrees, 90% humidity, and then you walk through a freshly irrigated cornfield. That's how it feels for him to wear this every day. We can do better. We have to do better. The inspiration for our new design came by just looking around the local community while we were there. We visited a prison where they teach inmates how to weave the bark off of a tree that comes off in these long strands called piasava into products like baskets or purses so that when they're released from prison, they can earn an income by selling it at the artisan market. So we thought to ourselves, why not use that skill in our device? We've now designed a simple device that's made from PVC and the woven component from the piasava tree. It has an elbow that has just two positions and then an end effector or different tools that we can change out on the end that you can change with a simple pin and slot mechanism. Changing the elbow position or the tools on the end is not automated in any way, but it's functional. All too often, engineers try to think, make things more complex than they really need to be. Keep it simple. Modern prosthetics here in the US cost between $5,000 and $15,000 a piece. This is just mechanical, not any that have any electronics. They've managed to get that down to between $125 and $1,800 in developing areas. Our product costs $34. Keeping it affordable is essential for those who are living in poverty. As we designed this, we also strove to use materials that we knew could be found locally. Then we also created very detailed instructions that are simple and don't have any words so that the local artisans, the local workers can actually create, can make this device themselves and maintain it. Then, they can also turn around and sell it to earn an income, sustainability. Finally, that also allows it to be adaptable. It's so simple that people can adjust it. The workers, the customers can all adjust it with just the simple tools that they have laying around their house. And then the sleeve that's made from the woven piasava is so flexible that it has a Velcro strap around it and you can adjust it by just simply tightening and loosening that strap. And then to top it all off, he actually uses it. Students in our program for assistive technologies for the underprivileged have completed dozens of projects like this, not just prosthetics, but all sorts of devices to empower people, both locally here in the Quad Cities and across the globe to improve their daily lives and to earn an income. We've also helped two universities abroad start programs like this of their own, so their students and their citizens can empower each other. It's my dream to take this to countries all over the world. Simple, affordable, sustainable, and adaptable. To teach others how to empower themselves and their neighbors. I challenge us all to take a look around our local communities and ask, not how can I help, but how can I empower?